You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, business coach at Draw in Customers Business Coaching, and author of the bold business book, available on Amazon. Today, we are welcoming slash preparing to learn from Rachel Rasmussen of Rescue Desk. Rachel, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good, James. How are you? I'm tipped up. You know, I'll tell you what. Um, there's only one thing that could make this world better right now, and that would be to remove the roof off of this building. Right. It's so nice. And oh, my Wisconsin, gosh. And we get six days, and we're spending them in the studio. <laughs> That's okay. That's so, all right. So, Rachel, how about you? You got Rescue Desk. Yes. Tell the world what you do. Well, um... I own Rescue Desk, and we are celebrating 10 years in business. Nice. High five there. Boom. This spring, 2008, we That's launched awesome. on the first day of the recession. Oh, <laughs> what better place? <laughs> right. Can, can only go up. That's kind of what I figured. You know, so, you, you probably set the precedent because a lot of people started businesses then after they got axed from right? where they were at. So. I know. So, yeah. It's no, like Rachel's figure. doing it. must be cool. Right. Exactly. So we started on the first in the spring of 2008, which is, like I said, within a few months of the, everything just crashing. Yeah. But right, um, details. That's we're okay. So, um, yeah. So, no, we're celebrating 10 years in business this year, and we are... Um, a virtual assistant firm. Okay. So what that means is we are kind of an outsourced project manager, executive assistant, marketing coordinator, mm -hmm. all rolled into one. Okay. And so we work with small business owners who need that high level support person okay. to help get some of the stuff done for, on their to-do list. Sure. Um, but they don't necessarily need an employee. All right. So they call us. All right. And so the virtual part of what we do is just logistics. We work from our own office. Nice. We don't go on site okay. um, typically to our clients. So, sure. so if you think about a, um, a small business owner, as I'm sure you can appreciate, their yeah. to-do list mm -hmm. is Long. overwhelming. Right, like Santa's naughty list. Correct. And so they need somebody to kind of run around behind the scenes and help them take care of the stuff on their to-do list. Sure. Sure. They need a high-level support team, okay. a support staff. Can you give some specific examples? Sure. So a lot of the work that we do tends to kind of fall under that marketing and communications work. Sure. So if you look at a small business that needs to do email campaigns mm -hmm. and manage their social media accounts and put some brochures or flyers together or help manage events, um, that's what we do. Gotcha. So, but we do it for clients that need that kind of work on a regular basis. Sure. So they have things that have to happen every week, every month, every quarter. Mm -hmm. um, we just become part of their team. So without you, it likely just would not. Get it would done. not get done. Okay. Um, because you know when we're all busy, the first thing to go is right? that stuff that sure. not that's important but not necessarily urgent. Sure. So and, I'll do the social media post later. Right. Because I'll plan whatever later. Right. And so sure. what tends to happen is the pipeline doesn't get filled. Sure. All right. For their marketing and sales and and operations and projects don't get done because sure. they're too busy working in the business and not on it. Fair. Totally so, fair. So, um, so we're a tactical team that um, is basically your their support staff, their nice. executive assistant, marketing coordinator. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's fun. All right. It sounds like fun because there's a lot fun. of variety. It sounds like there's right? a lot of variety. And you're working yeah. with different business owners, and I imagine they come up with projects that you're like, you know what? No one's ever asked that, but turns out I got the <sighs> skill set, so let's just make it happen. Every once, it's not very often. Okay. Because what we found is that a lot of businesses, the work that they need done, mm -hmm. um, we already have the skill set. So it's not learning how to do email campaigns. Sure. We already know how to do that. Sure. So our learning curve tends to come in just learning the client okay. and how they work and their industry and things sure. like that. So so one of the things that I was curious about, I guess since we're, we're going down this road, is for social media posts specifically, mm -hmm. you're managing those? Like you're posting on behalf of yeah, clients? Yeah, we have a, a fairly involved kind of onboarding intake process okay. um, when clients come to us and say hey you know we have Facebook channels we have Twitter we have LinkedIn we have sure. Instagram we have all these channels that we know we need to keep managed and maintained and updated mm -hmm. with content in order um, sure. to uh, for it to work yeah but they don't have time to find the content write the content sure. post it track it things mm -hmm. like that so it's all a process okay um, 
So that, how do you learn? Let's say specifically for like somebody comes to you, let's just say an asphalt company comes and they're mm -hmm. like, hey, post on some social media for us. And you're like, great. I don't know anything about <laughs> asphalt. How do, you, easy. How, do you connect, how do you ask. connect those dots? Okay. Well, we like I said, we have a pretty involved intake process. So it's like a lot of, you know, it's a pretty involved conversations right up front and gotcha. questionnaires and asking about their industry and, and who their customers are and who their clients are and why sure. are they on social media? And uh -huh. who, give me some of your um, other marketing so uh, we can learn your voice mm -hmm. and things like that. So, gotcha. okay. um, yeah. And then, um, we just package it all together and put a process behind it and sure. get it done. Nice. So, that sounds yeah, cool. It is. It's fun. So how did you end up here as a, as a VA, a virtual assistant, right? How did you start? How did you decide this was the business you were going to start? Um, well, um, it's to make a, I'll make a long story short. We got an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we got time. Um, well, <laughs> as it turns out, um, before I started a business, mm -hmm. I spent probably my 20s and into my early 30s doing a lot of job hopping. Okay. Because um, as it turns out, I'm not that great of an employee. <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say I'm not. Or any of no, us. Yeah, right. No, it's not that I wasn't a great employee, but my... I have a very short attention span, sure. I guess is a better way to say that. Squirrel. So, squirrel, <laughs> yeah. So I would spend a few years in a job, mm -hmm. master the job, and be bored to tears. Ah, and I'd have to move sure. on. And I'd want to be chasing the next challenge, sure. the next adventure. Mm -hmm. So um, I did that for, you know, in, in college and post-college and all, sure. you know, did all the jobs that I was supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, just checking boxes. Just now, checking right? boxes and uh, moving on and looking for the next challenge, the next adventure. Sure. And um, one summer I was working for a company that went through a reorganization. Okay. And I was laid off. Oh. I know. But it turned out it was the best thing that could have happened because I spent a summer freelancing for nice. the first time ever. Nice. And that's when the seed was planted. So I was. Yeah. So did the freelancing, did you just fall into that? I kind of did. Like I. Or did you start marketing it? Or no. People no. were like, hey, I know you're looking for a job, so why don't you just yeah, take care of Yeah. Well, way? you know, my background's in publishing. Okay. So publishing and marketing. So mm -hmm. I had some connections in the publishing industry. Sure. So I could be, you know, I was freelance editing and doing a little freelance design work. Yeah. Um, you know, and things like that. So I just reached out to the people in, that I knew in my yeah. network. Okay. And, um, you know, I was able to get some, some project work. Sure. And like I said, that's when the seed was planted because mm -hmm. it turns out I loved working for myself. Nice. I mean, I had the discipline for it. Mm -hmm. um, I had the drive for it. Huge. I had the work ethic. Sure. Um, it felt really comfortable. Like I could work with my own circadian rhythm. Sure. So to speak. That's so awesome that you say, I want to pause you right there. I teach uh, some classes, right? And business planning classes. Yeah. And there's people that come in there. They're coming in late. They're disorganized. This, we haven't even gotten to the plan. <laughs> right. <laughs> And their life is just a mess, and they're mm -hmm. filled with excuses. And I take them through this process of, like, I don't accept excuses because <laughs> I'm, I'm spending my time that I could be spending with my kid around my business with you guys, so you better just fix your stuff. <laughs> Plus, and arguably more importantly, as the world goes as a whole, how are you going to start a business when you can't even figure out how to come to a class on time? Right. We're not talking, like, a minute late. We're talking, like, 20 minutes late. Yeah. Like, what? What, yeah. What, what is that? What world are you in? Oh, yeah. That you're gonna... like, oh, yeah, totally disciplined. I got this business thing down. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. no, no. 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 It requires an insane amount of discipline. Yes. People like you still owe me money. So yeah. <laughs> so, that's it. So, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah. You, so you were working on your own? I was working on my own, and that's when the seed was planted. So I wasn't ready at the time. I don't think I recognized it. Sure. Okay. But I knew I loved it. All right. So I went back to work for, you know, real jobs. Okay. So during that time when you're freelancing, you are continuing to look yes. for a gig. Yes. Okay. Um, but when I went back to work, my perspective changed. Ah. So knowing that kind of in the back of my mind, someday sure. I want to work for myself. All right. So I started paying attention to managers and leaders that mm -hmm. I admired and what did I learn from oh, them. Sure. And taking occasional classes on entrepreneurship okay. or... Um, just paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ultimately landed in a job that 
is best described as square peg round hole. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, was not, it was, you know, a great organization, but it was the largest organization I'd ever worked for. So, so. burger flipping? Or? No, no, I was in a marketing department um, of an organization that had probably a thousand people working okay, there. Okay, okay. In my entire professional background, the largest company I'd worked for mm -hmm. had 40 people. Oh, gotcha. So it was okay. culture shock. Sure. And turns out I'm not built to work in a cube. Okay. <laughs> um, I was getting, I was regularly scolded for helping people in other departments. Oh, nice. You know, is this, you know, when you have a no small business. No prairie dogging, right? Right. <laughs> so when you have a small business or you're working in a small business, everybody's, you know. Right. Don't you dare say that's not my job, right? Right. Everybody jumps in and it's, there is no such thing as it's not my job. If right. you have the skills, you jump in and you, and yep. you do the work. Yep. Um, so yeah, I learned very quickly in that particular role that was sure. not for me, but it was the fire I needed that um, I, sure. I started looking a lot more seriously at how can I make this working for myself happen. Interesting, that's awesome. So yeah, spent I was um, spent several months uh, saving and planning and okay. and um, the more I read and the more people I talked to and the more mm -hmm. classes I took, the more I realized I didn't know. Sure. Which was a very, it's a very overwhelming feeling. That's how you know that you're learning, right? That's how you know you're learning. You gain questions by knowledge, right? Right, but I felt like the more I learned, the you know, it was exponentially more questions. Sure, right. And uh, that was Some hard. Point, I thought this was going to stop. Right, right. <laughs> right. So um, it made it hard to pull the trigger. Oh, because interesting okay so induces some fear it, lots of fear because i would you know study one particular aspect of mm -hmm. running a business say mm -hmm. you know finance sure oh tears just <laughs> flowing the more i knew the who more I designed the pnl <laughs> right. it's the most awkward right. looking form ever right so um but in the spring of 2008 i was like, well, it's now or never. So I just uh, jumped the corporate bus while it was moving. So how long were you at that job then? A year. A year. One year. All right. To the day. And the plan was when you quit that, boom, that I'm was it. business on my own. Yep. This none of this it. None of this on the side business. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's either go big or go home, That's right? right. You, don't, time. you don't jump off a dime, diving board with one foot on there, right? Exactly. Either, you're exactly. getting in the pool or you're tripping. <laughs> yeah. Either way, you're getting wet. Right? Either way, you're getting wet. So I'm like, because, well, it was interesting because I, what kept, what helped mm -hmm. as I, you know, before I kind of made that leap from yeah. a, a secure, well-paying sure. job into the unknown of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. um, I kept coming back to what is the worst thing that'll happen? Oh, sure. Worst thing that would happen mm -hmm. is that I have to get a job. Yep. Not that bad. Fair. <laughs> so, totally fair. So um, that's what drove me. That's so interesting that you say that, right? Because when I started my business, I quit I quit a job. I wouldn't say it was decent paying. It was probably dirt. But that was even more so, right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, what am I really risking? Mm -hmm. My wife looked at it completely differently. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. she's like, where did, our, where did your paycheck go? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not going to have one of those. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah. Or it'll be a huge paycheck. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. But I mean, like, the risk was, like, I can get another job. Yes. That's not the challenge, right? Right. And so, so well, that, and at the time, it was just me. Okay. So I, you know, I wasn't married. I didn't, you know, so sure. nobody was relying on me, which also, you know, it's a double-edged sword, sure. I think, for people starting businesses. Because you um, don't have another income correct, to rely on or something. That correct. Nature. But nobody's relying on my sure, income. Sure, So... Um, other than the dog, right. you know, <laughs> <laughs> kibble's cheap. Kibble's cheap. So um, rabbits are everywhere, <laughs> right? So I just that's what drove me, and that, and really, that belief, and of uh, I would rather be broke and happy mm -hmm. than making a lot of money and miserable. Perfect. And so, not that they're exclusive. Not no no, but for me, mm -hmm. that was my perception that was my sure. from perspective. a risk point of view from a risk point of view mm -hmm. um that if the worst thing that happened mm -hmm. was i had to get a job well yeah. you know sure that's fine and Ain't no thing right and i mean and i was lucky i had the support of my family and Very you know cool. everybody knew what i was doing and um yeah so launched it and uh started out working out of my home and 
my very it's funny when i think back on it now i'm thinking oh i was so cute <laughs> <laughs> you know I, i'll pull up my business plan that i put together oh, that's 10 perfect. years ago i tell people you want to laugh <laughs> you want to look laugh. at your plan from any time in the past yes i i i too teach a, a small business class yeah. and that i tell that story i i encourage the entire class it's a very an intro class mm -hmm. so you want to start a small business sure and my job is to excite them and scare them yep. all in the same yep. few hour period and I always tell them, you know, I encourage, strongly encourage them to put together a business plan because it's, it's a difficult exercise, mm -hmm. very difficult Can because be, sure. you don't know the answers to anything, but 80 you're just of a guess, 80% of a guess, but, um, you do that plan and you pull it out six mm -hmm. months, a year later. And I mean, I've always been a proponent of updating mm -hmm. business plans, you know, mm -hmm. regularly, but you pull out that first one and you're, I just remember thinking, Oh, I was so cute to think I could do X, Y, or Z. Sure. But in the same breath, I'm like, wow, I completely blew this goal out of the sure. water in the first few months. I didn't make fortune 500 by you. Right. <laughs> So the IPO but, is still in the back burner, <laughs> right? But I remember when I started the business, my initial thought was I just wanted a lifestyle that okay. fit me. Okay. I wanted to do work that I loved doing, mm -hmm. but I also wanted my time to be my own. Mm -hmm. So to do things that were important to me outside of the work, you know, sure. I wanted my whole life to be a, uh, just a well-balanced thing of you know right. work that I like to do and mm -hmm. creative outlets and creative endeavors and things like that. Um, I remember thinking I wanted, you know, photo Fridays because I was sure. into, you know, photography at the mm -hmm. time. So I'm like, I want an entire day every week to just focus on my art. You nice. Know? But uh, what surprised me was within a few months of starting my business, mm -hmm. I was like, uh, uh, running a business is where it's at. <laughs> nice hobbies hobbies forget it yep. this is my life like i loved it i loved mm -hmm. everything about it sure. and that constant learning and the and um being shoved outside of your comfort zone right every day one of the few drugs that'll make you smarter and should make you money right <laughs> in theory yeah in, in theory, theory right. yeah so let me know if that works out for you when that works out for you. <laughs> <laughs> i can tell you that if i would have started a, a crack uh addiction Versus starting a business, <laughs> yeah. things may have gone a different direction. Completely different direction. So I think I'm cool. I think you're good. I think you're good. <laughs> so, yeah. So it started out as just me working from home. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, no, this isn't enough. Sure. I want more. All right. So over the last ten years, we've grown, and now you know we have a team. There's a team mm -hmm. of us at Rescue Desk, and we uh, work out of an office downtown. Sure. Like, um, this is not a home-based business anymore. So was the initial plan to have employees? Uh, if you would ask me that in the first few months, no, yeah, that no. wasn't, it was the plan about six months in. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. So, cause with, you're like, I got to start delegating cause I'm getting delegated. Right. I'm the right. Delegatee. And I was learning very quickly that in order to grow, mm -hmm. I, you know, there's only so many hours in a day, you know, true, and, true. and if I wanted to hit a point, hit a goal, I mm -hmm. couldn't do it on my own. Right. So that's <clears throat> kind of when the plan shifted. It's sure. Like, let's grow this thing. Right. That's so. awesome. I love that you designed, when you say lifestyle, that you designed this lifestyle that you wanted your mm -hmm. business to supply you with. Yes. And then figured out the business to fit that in. Yes. Versus the other direction mm -hmm. where people are like, oh, I'm good at plumbing. So let me start a plumbing business when. Right. Maybe certain hours of the day or times of year that you're not really interested in working as hard as other times. Mm -hmm. And if those don't coincide with the business or, if, you know, like plumber, right? Right. You're on call. Somebody's toilet backs up and it's midnight. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be like, hey, whenever you get a chance. <laughs> yeah. No. I know you're on vacation for the week, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's not going to happen. They're going mm -hmm. on to the next, your competitor. Yeah. So with a business like yours, you're like, this is the lifestyle I want. This is a business that can do it. Mm -hmm. So let's make this happen. It's make fantastic. it happen. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's make it happen. And then, uh, yeah, and then learning very quickly that the skills that I brought to the table for the mm -hmm. clients, mm -hmm. that's only like 10% of what I had to know. Sure. Or what any business owner has to sure. know. Kind of, you know, back to the plumber. Mm -hmm. Where a plumber is probably, you know, an expert plumber. Sure. But running a business, yeah. completely different animal. What do you mean paperwork? What do you mean paperwork? <laughs> what is this payroll business? Or sales? What sales? Is what are oh, taxes? gosh, Come on. right? Sure. So, um, and I was having, and I still have the most fun mm -hmm. 
working on the business. Sure. You know, not necessarily down in the weeds and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, doing some of that work. Yeah. It's the strategic planning. It's the marketing. It's the learning, you know, finance and, and um, you know, some of those data-driven decisions sure. and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's... Um, that's where I have the most fun yeah. this day, these I days. Totally get that. You know, and managing my team and building my team mm -hmm. and working with them and coaching them and sure. um, yeah, that's fun. Leading. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, trying, attempting, <laughs> <laughs> failing on so, a fairly regular basis, no, but, uh, when, but failure is part of it. Yeah, when you have employees, that's just a thing. That it's just a thing. Totally a thing. <laughs> so yeah, for better or worse. Right. Did you were you ever in a management position before? Um. Yes, not, but I wasn't very good at it. Okay, no one is. No, so. I was never trained. Sure. You know, I never learned how to be mm -hmm. a manager because I'm a doer, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's a difficult transition so you're just to elbowing make. out of the way. Get out of the way. Let me yeah, show Yeah, let you me do it. I'll just take care of it. <laughs> let me just do it. So, sure. um, no, not a ton of management, uh, some, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit, but pretty sure. small scale stuff. So how did you learn? Was it classes or was it just on the job? <laughs> <laughs> on the business Trial training? and error. Sure. <laughs> pretty much. Okay. Um, mentors. Okay. Surrounding myself with people smarter than me. Sure. For sure. That's a big piece of advice that I teach at, in the class that I sure. teach. Just surround yourself with people smarter than you. Mm -hmm. Always strive to be the smallest fish in the biggest pond. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. I don't ever want to be the big fish in a small pond because I'm not learning anything from oh, there. Oh, interesting. I okay. want to be the small fish in a big pond. So, okay. Um, because that's just what's what propels you forward. Sure. You know, because you don't know what you don't know. Right. Until you're around people who know it. Very true. Very so, true. So tell me, at what point did you hire your first employee? Um, I hired my first employee um, probably about a year, year and a half in. Okay. And at that um, point, were you still working out of your house? No. 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 I had, I had a little office space. Okay. Um, and <laughs> it's funny because being a business owner, you would think that the risk aversion, like mm -hmm. you don't have any. But I've got huge okay. risk. Sure. So, like, my first employee was an intern. Oh, okay. So, I did that intentionally. So, no pay? No, I paid her. Okay. Like, uh, payroll. Like but payroll, knowing that she was going to go away. But knowing that it wasn't okay. necessarily permanent. Let because just I wanted, my toe was in the I want to try it and sure. see how it goes and uh, haven't looked back. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, that's, yeah, probably about 2009. Okay. Her hired my first employee. And then. Do you still get calls from references from that intern looking for um, I did not. I mean, it was about a year ago. I nice. did. And I was like, she was awesome. <laughs> Hire her. You're a fool if you don't. Sure. So that's awesome. All yeah. Right. So you maintain having employees. You get them in your office. Was it tough to get them to do what you wanted them to do? Um, sometimes it is not very often, though. OK. You know, because um, we are very lucky that our team at Rescue Desk is just phenomenal. We couldn't do the work without them. Very cool. Um, I mean, I've heard horror stories from other, my colleagues and, sure. you know, other business owners who just have the hardest time mm -hmm. finding and keeping the right people. And we've been very lucky that that's we haven't. The biggest challenge I have had and in talking with other business owners, that's the biggest challenge they have. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, no, I, and I don't know if it's, it's probably a combination of just hiring the right people and the sure. right chemistry and mm -hmm. um but yeah they're phenomenal because we're, we're kind of a hybrid team of sure. employees and some contractors okay. long you know who've been with us for years and sure. there's just a really good synergy cool. that um yeah it's i'm one of the things i'm most grateful for mm -hmm. um is that awesome team so, nice yeah so what would you tell someone that was considering starting or that has a business that is thinking about getting employees well first i would tell them to uh call us and go through their to-do list nice <laughs> seal um, that up seal it up um you know what's worked for me mm -hmm. is not necessarily hiring for i mean you need a baseline of skills mm -hmm. that you want to hire for but i was always more interested in hiring and building a team that was based on the culture i was trying to Huge. build very huge. So, yeah. So you want people, you know, I want to hire people who are, you know, smart and funny and mm -hmm. want to learn and work well together. You know, sure. kind of those personality traits. Because mm -hmm. I can train certain skills. Right. I can teach somebody to use a software program Absolutely. or, um, you know, how to run processes or things like that. Mm -hmm. That that I can teach. You can't teach personality or no. culture. So no. um, that was always been. And that's our huge focus, too, when we hire or when we um, bring on new clients. Right. 
is is uh, personality. So does, and you're asking if the clients fit the culture? Kind of. Essentially? Okay. Yeah. So they're, they're getting vetted to say, we uh-huh. want to work with you because you're not a jerk? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if they can work with, you know, if we know we can work well together, then mm-hmm. it's a win-win across the board. Sure. You know, then nobody's frustrated. Clients aren't frustrated. My team isn't right. frustrated. Um, we you're can't not, do our best work. Sure. If, not wasting time battling. Right. Right. Sure. So, um, yeah. So it's all about, you know, personality. Nice. Um, for us. Nice. It works well. And um, we've been lucky to have a great team, great, you know, client base who's been with us for years. Sure. And I think that's why, mm-hmm. you know. So, because we can crack jokes. And, right. <laughs> and, you know, I can call any one of our clients and be like, hey, let's go out for a beer. You sure. know, like, that's that, just that um, crossing you know, beyond client vendor to sure. relationship and friendship. Sure. Um, then everybody's, you know, everybody's you, happy. Right. And you feel much more comfortable referring. Absolutely. Absolutely. Of, Absolutely. And people open up when you give them a beer. So. Totally. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I always no. think we should have beer here. Right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Just, I think that's legal. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> in Wisconsin, it should be. Should be. Cheese curds. So I went, right? So at 10 years in business, you probably learned quite a few things. Yes. One or two. So few, one, yeah, one or two things. I just think of like the business uh, calls and call that I have. We're still trying to figure out the pricing model, and we've been in business six plus years, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, whether it's a, a changing dynamic of the people that we're working with, mm-hmm. or small business is changing, or you get more competition, or people are asking you to do things and things that you can do, but they want it structured a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk to you about pricing model because what you have essentially is a service. Yes, so 100% it's not, service. Yeah, so there may that, be some people that try to commoditize it and there's mm-hmm. going to be like, oh, I could just hire some intern in India to do whatever, blah, 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 right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, go ahead and try that, see in six yeah. months. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? exactly. Have fun. Or there's going <laughs> <or there's gonna laughs> to be people that maybe don't even understand what they're asking you to do. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, post on social media for me. I mm-hmm. see my 12-year-old kid do it, so it must be easy and take you like 30 seconds <laughs> yeah, a week, right? right? Right, Like where they don't necessarily even know the value or the time. Yeah. So can you kind of walk us through that? That's a challenge we face too. Well, you, and the very, the baseline is just being a service-based business. Sure. Is A, kind of difficult because, mm-hmm. um, you know, I still have yet to figure out the whole billable hour model and mm-hmm. figuring it out in a way that works for us and works for clients. And it's a lot of education on the value. So you're talking about cost or just, uh, you just kind people... of across the board, okay. you know? Um, so yeah. And it's explaining that value is, mm-hmm. um, you know, because we're not, and I think this is probably true for a lot of um, service-based businesses. We're not transactional. Sure. You know, we're we're we've never been and we never will be a transactional. So people aren't buying a cheeseburger from you, moving on their life after they pay you. Correct. Right? They're not calling us and saying, "Hey, do this quick project, move moving on." Sure. It's very relationship based. Okay. So there's so, some gray area. There's a lot of gray area sure. because it's very much developing that relationship and getting to a point to, that we know what the client needs before they even ask for it mm-hmm. because we understand their business and we've mm-hmm. invested the time. Um, and the resources to really understand their business because mm-hmm. we're part of their team. Mm-hmm. You know, the way you would expect an employee to do that. Sure, absolutely. So, um, and then I bet the challenge comes in education, right? Because you know it. Because mm-hmm. I run into this with calls on call, right? Mm-hmm. Like someone calls me up and in 30 seconds I'm like, oh yeah, I know exactly what you need. But right. I found that when I tell them that right away, this is what you need, they feel like they're being sold. Oh, sure. And I just want to get off the phone. Like, let's yeah. just sign this, make this happen. <laughs> You're going to love us in six months. Your spouse is going to love Trust us even me. more. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. don't mean to be a used car salesman kind of. I'm just like, <laughs> we're here to save time. We don't need to talk about the weather. Let's just get going. Right. And it turns out that people are like, whoa, pump the brakes there, clown. Yeah, they need to. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they say that to a lot. Not to my face, but I'm sure they mean yeah. it. <laughs> So, yeah, I imagine that's a, that's a challenge. Right? It is a challenge. So it's a lot of conversation, a lot of education, especially up front. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's okay, you know, because then the more time we invest doing that up front, the stronger the relationship is in the long term. Sure, sure. So, um, but yeah, it's like this old joke that I heard where, um, you know, two people are sitting at a table and one of them is a graphic designer and the other one is a business owner. And the mm-hmm. business owner says, hey, can you draw me a logo? And the graphic designer pulls out a napkin, you know, scribbles it on a napkin, sure. a picture or whatever. Right. 
in you know five minutes hands it over and says okay that'll be five hundred dollars sure and the business owner says what it only took you five minutes and right. the graphic designer is like yeah five minutes and 20 years of experience right right so that's um you know that's kind of where that value comes in like, sure so now you're trying to bottle that that experience into an hourly rate right which, right yeah for me with business coaching is tough i imagine for you with the virtual administration stuff mm -hmm. it can be a little tough because sometimes we try very hard not to get punished for efficiency right you know so you know we do things and we do things well and mm -hmm. we do things quickly mm -hmm. but then that means it takes us less time sure. which then eats into the billable hour. Sure. So it's a challenge. I think any service-based business that's right. on a billable hour model has the same challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we I'm still trying to figure that out. Okay. Um, we've well, we been doing it long enough. Do, yeah, we, I mean, we've been doing it long enough that we've got a pretty good idea. Um, sure. But um, every once in a while. All right. So. So how do you compete with the? Uh, like I read the four-hour work week, right? And they're talking oh, about yeah. <laughs> four-hour work <laughs> week. <laughs> so. I will tell you that there's some that helped me from a paradigm shift point of view and not necessarily for the VA stuff that he mentions, but it's more just thinking like, you don't have to work 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Just that alone is like, huh? All right. <laughs> I assume that the options were either 40 or more than 40. Right. It still feels like that. Yeah. yeah. I, right. yeah. I didn't know the 36 was even an option. Yeah. yeah. What is this part time business? Yeah. So, so that being the thing. Uh, tell me how you compete with people or how you talk with people that are like, oh, couldn't I just go on Fiverr or something like that to do X, Y, and Z? Um, well, in some cases, I tell them that's exactly what they should do. Okay. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> You know, I mean, if Don't I mean, do it, see in six months. Yeah, well, either that or looking at what it is that they need. Sure. We're, maybe we're not the best fit. Sure. Um, but if every once in a while, if we get somebody who you know is kind of thinking like that, it gets back to that education piece of like, mm -hmm. all right, what is it that you're really looking for? Sure. Are you looking for that team member mm -hmm. to really step in and manage that relationship with you? Sure. And understand the business and do, you know, it's that, again, back to that education piece of sure. explaining the value. Mm -hmm. Or are you, is someone specifically looking for something that's very just transactional? Sure. Um, so, and if that's what they're looking for, Godspeed, more power to you. Have at, <laughs> have at, it. Have at it. So, and we'll see you in six months. Sure. <laughs> or six days, right? Right. I try. They're not returning my emails. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so what, have, what have been some of the things that you've learned over the course of 10 years? Let's say the five year mark. Oh, gosh. So, there had to be a point when you reach five years, that's a milestone for small businesses. It is. It is. So, the first five years, what do you think you learned? Oh, oh, we don't have enough time for that. Um, <laughs> top three things, let's say. Top three things I've learned in just the first five years. First five years. First five years. Because um, they're going to be a little rockier. Oh, yeah. The first, first five years were tough. You got your first office. Yep. Which yep. means that you learned all kinds of things that, people, right, that you right. get charged for. Yeah, like, well, I know. Just to right? have water here what is do you expensive because you're a business. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, the first five years... Um, was a time of very, very intense learning. Okay. Um, cause hitting that five year mark, like you said, is a big deal, huge deal. you know, because mm -hmm. that huge percentage of businesses mm -hmm. aren't around after five years, whether mm -hmm. by design or choice or sure. whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was figuring out how to work more on the business than in it. Mm -hmm. I still trying to figure that out. <laughs> um, it was managing the plateau. Oh, tell um, me about that. You know, by about year five, we, you know, we were growing. We still are growing sure. pretty steadily. Mm -hmm. um, but we, you know, like any business hits a plateau. And sure. all of a sudden we had a year that we didn't really grow. All right. At least according to the numbers. Sure. Didn't love that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. 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 Well, and it, it was mostly, it, it caused me to reflect okay. on like, we're doing everything right. Sure. But realizing, no, we're not. Oh. Because in order to get to that next level, you got to change how you're doing things. Sure. And sure. it required that plateau to see that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a big one. Yeah. What um, else? Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. And it, again, it was that first five years of just that constant learning sure. of how to manage people. Well, let's go back to the plateau. How did yeah. you get out of it? Um, 
looked at what we could do differently Mm -hmm. and without you know it's kind of like just because we've always done it this way doesn't mean we have to keep doing it this way and because we were kept doing things the way we were doing them we Mm -hmm. couldn't grow Ah, you know like um so stuff wouldn't scale stuff stuff wouldn't scale and it's already very difficult to scale i think a service-based business that's got that creative component Mm -hmm. um not impossible by any stretch but it was that because you have to add people that add people add people and um and keeping the value you don't want to dilute the value at all so that's always constant Sure. That's the uh, baseline of any decision. So you we know. have a 700 person creative team kind of seems right. Like, kind of seems do you? Yeah. How effective can you be? Sure. So, um, and it was also that first five years of really improving myself. Ah. Um, you know, an example being I'm I'm very naturally introverted. Okay. So. But I knew that in order to get business, I had to talk to people. Sure, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to learn to uh, um, compensate ah, for that and okay. and improve my skills in a way that kind of honored how I am and who mm-hmm. I am, uh, but still pushed me out of my comfort zone. That's interesting so, choice of words. I love that. Honored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I remember the very first, because I knew that was my one of my biggest fears when I started the business was sales. Uh, I was terrified, sure. terrified of sales. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't, you know, I couldn't sell a coat to an Eskimo. Like sure. that was my, what I thought. Well, that good. was, yeah, I was, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Um, but I, I uh, remember the very first networking event I went to it was like the first week I was I think it was even before I left my previous job oh, like, nice. All yeah. right. and I was terrified I was terrified because I was walking into this room full of strangers mm-hmm. and having to s- talk about something that I hadn't even really technically started yet <laughs> to see if I could drum up a client just had a shirt that said coming soon right <laughs> right but what worked is a the half a glass of wine I had before I left. So that, before you left. Before I went in, before I walked in. Okay. Um, but then giving myself permission. And I remember mm-hmm. it was a Chamber of Commerce event. And there was maybe 100 people there. Sure. I gave myself permission. I said, I will lap the room twice mm-hmm. at a reasonable pace. <laughs> I won't run. <laughs> yeah. What was that? <laughs> at a reasonable pace. Sure. And if someone, if nobody stops me, mm-hmm. then I can leave. So the so, rule is you lap the room, but you don't reach out to anyone. It, it was just walking in the this door. This is pure introvert here. Totally. Okay. So I, okay, so that I gave myself, you know, sure. these rules. So I walked in and mm-hmm. had to slow my pace, walking around the room and, you sure. know, trying not to, uh, you know, look like I was dead inside because, sure. you know, I kind of, you know, wasn't <laughs> smiling because I was terrified. Just staring at the floor yeah. the whole time. <laughs> yeah. But no, I had, you know, I held my head up and, um, by the second lap, somebody stopped me. All right. And I was at that event for an hour. Nice. And so... Did they try to sell you life insurance? No. <laughs> no, they didn't try to sell me life insurance. But um, I met a woman there who I still know today. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very so cool. um, it was just taking those baby steps. And that now... I mean, I can go to networking events all the time. It's still sure. not my natural state. Sure. But now, I, you know, it's not that big a deal. I have a hard time believing that it's anybody's natural state because in the end it's just a bunch of sharks with a bunch of other sharks saying um, oh, and, and I don't know about that because in my experience I run I run into more people like me yeah than the sharks no when I say sharks I mean it's people essentially maybe maybe it's like a goldfish in a shark suit <laughs> yeah. how's that right where they're they're there for a goal of trying to sell mm-hmm. but essentially the majority of the people there are there to sell right Right. There are very few people that are just like, you know what? Let's just go shopping. Yeah, that's true. I'm just going to collect business cards that's and true. see if this is what I'm looking for. Like, it's not a garage sale, right? It's right. essentially a bunch of salespeople. In and some so that's cases, what I, yeah. I say, you know, like, did anybody try to sell you life insurance? Because you go to these networking events yeah. and people are like, oh, let's meet for coffee. I'd like to learn about your business. Right. And before you know it, you're looking at some little or flip financial book. Yeah. planners. Oh, yeah. Or we'll solve your problems. Or, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, luckily it didn't take very long to pick those people out from sure. 10 paces. So, right. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was, um, and it was just the first five years, it was constant experiences like that. Okay. Um, and just pushing myself outside my comfort sure. zone and seeing what I was made of and mm-hmm. allowing myself to just 
fall flat on my butt. Sure. You know, and be okay with it. Right. You know, so. So one of the things that I think you get about starting a business is that on top of improving the business itself, you're improving yourself. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, um, which is probably part of the addiction, right? Kind of. Yeah. It makes, um, <laughs> it's funny. Cause I remember I, I got married five years ago Okay. and I remember when I was planning a wedding, my, okay. my wedding, it was nice. a small wedding, no sure. big deal. And I remember people saying like, Oh, how stressful. How do you find the time? And you know, to do all of this and you know, planning a wedding, I'm like, Planning a wedding, not the hardest thing I've ever done. So, <laughs> you know, you get these skills when mm -hmm. you start a business. It doesn't matter if you're just a one or two person shop sure. or if you continue to grow or whatever. Mm -hmm. That Those skills bleed into the rest of your life Absolutely. and can only serve you, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, it's pretty easy to, uh, you know, talk to vendors. And when we need a new roof, well, right. I know how to call those, you know, like... You know, I can have those conversations a lot easier. You're not afraid of the phone. Like not some afraid people. of the phone. Not right? afraid of the phone. So, um, yeah. Um, <coughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, it's, so, so it's for sure. starting a business and self improvement. Oh, all and the same thing, right? Yeah, and kind of on accident. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't really planned for. Sure. Um, you know, when I, you know, talk to younger people and some of the challenges that they have in their jobs and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't resonate with me anymore because i'm like well just solve it by doing this that right thing. i have the same oh my gosh the students in my class and they come up with their excuses and i'm like should i get a notebook and write these down so you can reference them later like who are you telling these excuses to nobody cares <laughs> yeah. like the time it took for you to complain you could have solved this already what is the big deal yeah so uh even I see stuff like my family's got a little thing going on mm -hmm. and I'm just like, oh my God, why are yeah. we even talking about this? Yeah. The battles that you pick now as a business owner, totally completely different, different than yep. the battles you picked, mm -hmm. you know, before you work for yourself and yeah. start, a, start a business. Right. Um, yeah. Was, and it kind of, you know, sometimes in some groups of people, either, you know, my family or some friends or whatever, you know, I'm a little bit the black sheep sure. because I don't, it's hard to sometimes relate. Absolutely. Um, sure. Which you know, it's a you know, it's not a challenge. It's just mostly an observation. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a little bit redheaded stepchild. Huh. Uh, this is what's important to you now. Huh? <laughs> Are you sure? Right. Well, it's just not having that relatability. Sure. Um, but I wouldn't change it for anything because now. You know, a lot of my friends are, you know, business owners and mm -hmm. your tribe, your tribe changes. Mm -hmm. It totally does. Yeah. And um, I love talking to people about their circle of friends mm -hmm. and how there's going to be some people that are going to go away. Your circle of friends is going to change. Mm -hmm. Probably not 100% because there's going to be some people that are cool. Right. And it may even grow if you start making stupid money. <laughs> It'll grow <laughs> larger than you want it to. Right. Right. But when you're asking people for help with your business, I look at like I moved one of my businesses, just office locations. And the way that it worked out, I had three days to do it because that's how I schedule. Right. Stuff. <laughs> so you don't. And you don't so, yeah. yeah, so I reached out to some friends and some friends came out. And we banged it out. And I was like, I'm moving a business. I'm not moving an apartment or a house. <laughs> yeah. I asked yeah. these friends to help me move a business, which is something that you shouldn't have to do. Right. In a pickup. Right? But yeah. whatever. But there We're it is. Here. Yeah. And I'm like, realistically, could have I hired people to do this in three days? Like, probably not. Probably not. So, but anyways, I had my circle of friends. They're like, yeah, no problem. You get some beer, you get some people, pizza, mm -hmm. you have some laughs. Mm -hmm. I tell them, get to work to my friends. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all good. Yeah. And I wonder, I bet not everybody has a circle like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. That I couldn't do what I do without the circles that mm -hmm. I have because, mm -hmm. um, you're as a business owner you're up against things that you, every day that you don't know what the heck is going on right, right. <laughs> what is that what is this that's that's i you know at least once a day mm -hmm. what is happening as i'm looking at some challenge right. issue right. um but yeah to be able to call on that tribe mm -hmm. and, that's huge um, even if it's just for advice or, right right you want right. to grab a beer so i can settle down and tell you about the crazy client exactly exactly look and, over this um, email that i'm about to send tell mm -hmm. me <laughs> Tell, tell me if I'm being a little snarky. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to get arrested with this. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, so. okay, the past five years, mm -hmm. you built upon the success of the first five years. Mm -hmm. What have been some things that you've learned there? So you've grown, you've existed for a while, you've out-survived just about 80% of the existing businesses yeah. that started up. In the last 
five in the, these past five years. Or have, um, has your perspective changed or what's changed in the past five years for you? Um, what's been tough a little bit in the last five years is um, burnout. Oh. That's a challenge. Okay. Um, and again, now knowing that we're kind of coming, you know, about that every five year mark mm -hmm. that now you have to start doing things differently mm -hmm. because what got you, you know, here is not going to get you there. Sure. So now it's being challenged by what do we need to change now sure. to get to the 15 year mark? Sure. Like, what do we need to do in the next five years to okay. amp up everything from, you know, the team to the services to mm -hmm. where some new efficiencies that can be put in place and all, sure. all of that kind of strategic stuff. Right. Um, is thinking about that okay and um you know where we want to be when we grow up I guess. Right. <laughs> if, and when. if and when we grow up so sure. um yeah you know and looking at taking on new risks mm -hmm. and now you know having some resources now to take on some risks that we sure. couldn't before mm -hmm. like you know expanding into new markets or into mm -hmm. new cities or sure. or being more intentional about it okay um you have a business foundation to grow on right just, right so yeah. you know based here in madison where 80 percent of our clients are kind of in the dane county area sure, sure. um what hap what does it look like if we want to open an office in milwaukee sure or in green bay mm -hmm. or in chicago or right. um looking at that next level of risk right um and does it align with the vision that I have for the firm as a whole? Because mm -hmm. um, your vision is kind of also constantly being tweaked and Absolutely. changed. So mm -hmm. um, just making sure everything is aligned. Right. And I have yet to figure out the whole working smarter, not harder thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that's the scary part. When you think about if you want to grow or expand or take on something new, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, does my work week go from 50 hours to 80 hours? Sure. Just, sure. just to do that. Sure. Um, or does it not have to? You know, I, you know, it's so. Well, it's interesting you say that because I look at some stuff like that to be the way some people, well, I guess when you lift weights or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. In the end, there's not really a whole lot of time management that can happen when you're working out. Right. Right? Like you're either going to run faster or you're going to run longer. Yeah. But realistically, your time in the gym, that's your time, right? Right. You're, you're working out in that time. So for something like I'm going to grow my business, and I'm going to find a way to do it more efficiently. Yeah. It's kind of counterintuitive. A little bit. A little bit. Because, like, what are you growing it for? If, you yeah. Know, like, I want to grow it. And while I'm growing it, not have as much time. It's like getting a spouse to save time. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You know, that that's not going to happen, not right? You're, giving, yeah. you're adding responsibility to yourself. So mm -hmm. to cut away that time is probably not realistic. That's not to say over the course of time. Right. It it's making smarter investments. Yeah. Like, investing in you know invest like and i mean investing not just money but investing time and sure. investing resources yep. um to get a bigger return mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so um yeah i just read something online once speaking of kind of that whole work-life balance um where between family friends sleep fitness and work mm -hmm. pick three <laughs> that's that's what you get. Oh, like two, I disagree two, with that. I, yeah, I don't know if I agree with it either. I just sure. thought it was an interesting premise yeah. that, you know, it's kind of like the, um, you know, what is it? The cost, speed, sure. and, and um, oh, quality. Oh, service quality and price. Yes, where you pick two, pick you can't two, have yep, three. Yep. Um, I thought that was an, but I thought that was an interesting um, concept of like, of those five things. Sure. If you want to be successful, you got to pick three. So let me, let me challenge that a little bit. Because when I say service quality and price and I'm teaching the class, I tell them to pick two. Mm -hmm. Because I always say, why would you want to be all three? Mm -hmm. Why would you want to offer the highest quality, the highest service, and, and the be the lowest price. price? Yeah. Like then you're not getting financially rewarded for all the risk that you've done. Right. And it's a great thing that you offered. Mm -hmm. But with life, to say like, no, I'll choose business and fitness, but family, let's just skip that one. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, why is no, there no, even a choice? I know, I know. But the then, like I said, like... I thought it was an, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that either, but sure. it, it made me stop and think. But to be fair, mm -hmm. uh, the, bi the I read a lot of biographies, successful people, successful in air quotes, right? Because mm -hmm. you could argue that all kinds of directions, like Warren Buffett, Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. um, Elon Musk. These are people that super focused and the majority of them did not select family. Yeah. In fact, all three of those did not select family. They didn't even select employees. They were mm -hmm. like, um, 
generally speaking, there's probably a lot of people that would know those people personally and say, you know what, I don't know why the world loves them. They were jerks. Yeah. Right? But they were so laser focused on what they were doing and therefore they accomplished a lot. Mm -hmm. But the cost to them, maybe not necessarily financial, but from a personal cost to them, mm -hmm. I feel like are they going to be on their deathbed thinking, I did this right? Yeah. Or are they going to be like, oh, I might have dropped the ball a couple places. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like, okay, so I'm not a multi-billionaire. However, mm -hmm. um, my kid knows my name, mm -hmm. right? And I got friends and I got family. I'm not sleeping at my office. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a certain lifestyle going back to that. Yeah. That I think some of these uber successful people that we read about maybe are kind of missing the mark by like a solid 75 feet. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It's Well, and I think it all comes down to knowing what you want. Absolutely. And what your personal, your personal mission is. It, definitely. You know, fair. and so, totally um, yeah, but it's a, it's a constant battle. I think that mm -hmm. work life interests, family balance, right. um, to be able to do it all. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't think you can do it all. I think you can do it. Um, they just have to take turns. Yeah. You know, that's kind of how I've sure. seen it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you just got to prioritize. You got to prioritize. Right? Yeah, you got to prioritize. You see a lot of people spending time at work, like they're sitting in their desk, but they well, may not necessarily be doing. Yeah, and work. I had a, I had a mentor tell me once that, um, he said, list the top five or six things in your life, mm -hmm. whether it's you know it's family, friends, work. Sure. You want to make a lot of money, you know, mm -hmm. finance, you know, whatever those top five things are, and whenever you're faced up against a decision. Mm -hmm that puts a couple of those in conflict, Yeah, go with the top one. Because oh. you listed that as a higher priority. Interesting, okay. So, um, yeah, so I thought that was, you know, I've kind of carried that with me a little bit. Sure. Um, so, yeah. It's interesting that you say that because mm -hmm. one of the questions that I ask people that sit in the chair you're sitting in now <laughs> is how they make decisions. Mm -hmm. And the majority of people are just like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a little bit of that too. Right, that's fair. But I'm like, you actually too. have a system. Yeah. And even if it's just a guide. And yeah, you're it's just like, a guideline. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. that's not. But it gives you something because yeah. often it's easier to fix something than it is to create something. Right. Right. So when someone you're presented with a decision and you're just like, what should I do? Uh, right. What right. What does my gut say? And you know, my gut says it's hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not concerned with yeah, my you acquiring tackle. another business or something like mm -hmm. that. Whatever. So, so it's interesting. Systems. Yeah, so it's just kind of like I said, having that general guideline, that list of, you know, the top things in your life. And, sure. And, and again, honoring that mm -hmm. list mm -hmm. and having faith in that list. And sure. there's a reason you came up with that list of priorities mm -hmm. to begin with mm -hmm. um, and using that to kind of help guide some decisions. Sure. Um, especially when, because there's, I mean, that's part of being a business owner. It's constant solving problems. Oh my gosh, definitely. That's, that's really the mm -hmm. definition, I think. Putting out the fires. Yep. Is solving problems. Mm -hmm. So you have to be comfortable solving problems. Sure. So. I want to downshift a little bit here. Can you define success for me? For you? <laughs> like, I can't define it for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me, what should I do? Oh, you know, no. I can't. <laughs> well, and the only reason I say no is that it depends. <coughs> it depends what time of day it is <laughs> so maybe let me reword the question okay how do you know if you are successful i know i'm successful when i feel good waking up in the morning fair okay um i know that's a little bit wishy-washy and i'm normally not kind of a wishy-washy kind of person they put that snooze button off your bed got most <laughs> alarms yeah. so you're not alone right it's a little wishy-washy but i feel successful i try to find success in all the little things okay because being a business owner there's so much you know problem solving and mm -hmm. fires to put out mm -hmm. sometimes a fire doesn't get put out but all of for every one fire that doesn't get put out mm -hmm. 10 do sure and so i find success in right. those 10. the thing will just smolder it's it'll just smolder it eventually i'll put it out mm -hmm. so um you know it's successfully navigating without blowing anything up mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Nice. um so I, I i don't really define success in one big overarching sure. this is what my life will look like okay. because life is a is a constant evolution sure it's con target. constant evolution mm -hmm. the minute you try to find solid ground under your feet it's ripped out from underneath you right. so um so it's finding 
happiness and gratitude and success in all the little things. Perfect. And um, remembering it, mm -hmm. remembering to celebrate those little successes. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of how I define success. Yeah. Um, I yeah. love it. I like so, that. Okay. That's solid. It's, it looks like it's a little wishy-washy, but um, for someone who's as tactical and uh, <laughs> right, well, by the, the numbers end, as I am. In um, the end, the goal is to accomplish success, right? Right. And right. it sounds like that would be fairly easy for a person like you to accomplish success versus someone that's going to put some arbitrary goal up right. that they aren't willing to do the stuff to achieve. Right. And therefore, they end up all depressed popping pills end up hanging in there well and it's a little bit of a double-edged sword because i put goals out there like i sure. put financial goals and fitness sure. goals and stuff and you, you know i don't to. i don't Absolutely. i don't hit them and i feel down and i'm like oh i suck you know but um but then it's like no if i hadn't set the goal i wouldn't even be halfway there sure so let's celebrate just heading in that direction mm -hmm. um because that's what keeps you going that's At fair least me that's totally so, fair yeah what have you learned from other business owners that has helped you everything <laughs> everything um yeah i love surrounding myself with other business owners and i mean most of our clients are small business owners nice. and sometimes i feel bad sending them an invoice because i feel like i've learned more th from them than we've done for them but um, I, I totally get that yeah um oh everything from you know leadership and management to to this the strategic stuff to mm -hmm. what not to do <laughs> <laughs> met a couple of those folks that's just from watching me go yeah, yeah, yeah you know like what worked and then kind of relating it to our own situation and sure and um yeah i mean i yeah i love hanging out with business owners oh my gosh small or large mm -hmm. like i said kind of that i'm a small fish in a big pond in some mm -hmm. cases and i love it i love sure. it because they help me think bigger mm -hmm. and know that it's possible mm -hmm. i love hanging out with startup brand new small business mm -hmm. owners because i know what they're going through <laughs> i know what they feel you're like you're so cute you're so, gonna be crying too. right so let me teach you and let me you know right you know and so to be able to pass to pay it forward mm -hmm. so yeah, it's awesome. You know, I totally get that. I was teaching one of these classes with the startups, right? Mm -hmm. And this woman was saying she's going to start a restaurant, slash she was going to offer some food to grocery stores, slash I'm really good at crafts, <laughs> slash I'm a graphic designer, mm -hmm. and just slash da, 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 da. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let's just talk about what it's going to take to start this tiny little cafe that you're talking about. Tiny, went through tiny the, little cafe. Tiny little cafe, right? It's 1,500 square feet. We even had rent. At six hundred dollars. Um, wow! I, ju I just went with a, whatever <laughs> numbers the class went with. That unless it was if it was low, I was cool with it. But if it was high, I was like, let's dial it in, right? Mm -hmm. And so we ended up startup costs a hundred and some thousand dollars, right? And that covered three months of supplies. Okay. Because I said when you open your doors, people aren't going to just line up, right? Like it's going to take some some time. Mm -hmm. And she just looked at that number, and I'm like, it's really like double that. I didn't tell her that. <laughs> She was looking at that number, and I'm like, this is what we do with the financial part of your business plan. We just figured this out. And mm -hmm. you could see, like, her dreams just got shattered. Oh, yeah. Right? I know that feeling. Yeah. So I'm like, you got to, like, I'm not saying don't start your business, right? I'm just saying pick one thing, and you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. If you got to come up with 150, 200 grand, you'll figure it out. Yeah, it's solving problems. That's the name of the game. It's the name, name of the game. game. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, this has been awesome, Rachel. I appreciate your stopping oh, yeah. by. yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Awesome good times. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. You will note that I wish that we could go on for another two hours. This has been <laughs> awesome. I didn't even look at my question sheet. We're coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kateman, business coach at Draw In Customers, business coaching, and author of the bold business book, available on Amazon. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, and our guest, Rachel Rasmussen of Rescue Desk. Thank you, Rachel. Very welcome. Find us airing on 103.5 Wednesdays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 2 p.m., as well as at the SunPrayMediaCenter.com. We can be found also morning, noon, and night at the podcast link on DrawInCustomers.com. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next week. Stay awesome, and of course, enjoy your business. 